let's continue on talking about equations of motion in this video we'll talk about third equation of motion but like the previous two videos we'll once again revisit the concept just to be sure that equations of motion are only valid for those kind of motions which have constant acceleration there are many instances of constantly accelerated motion around us and equations of motion come in very handy when we are trying to solve such problems the example of such motions are given over here you can have a look but now we'll talk about the third equation of motion first of all we'll see the expression and then we'll try to prove it using analytical method and graphical method so the third equation of motion looks like v square is equal to u square plus 2as where v is the final velocity u is the initial velocity a is the constant acceleration it must be constant and s is the displacement now in this equation we are not talking about time the variable time has been eliminated and we have relationship between initial velocity final velocity acceleration and displacement which is also change in position so now you can see that in the first equation we didn't have any mention of displacement in the second equation we didn't have any mention of final velocity in the third equation we don't have any mention of time now let's try to prove it so over here we know that acceleration can simply be written as dv by dt rate of change of velocity with respect to time and velocity can be written as ds by dt or the rate of change of displacement with respect to time now you must remember our goal in this uh, third equation uh, while proving it is to eliminate the factor of time that is the most important aspect so i will just divide these two equations correct and if i take the ratio of first equation with the second i'll get a upon v is nothing but dv upon ds correct and i can write a is equal to v dv by ds so my acceleration as i know is dv by dt which i have learned in the previous sections acceleration can also be expressed in terms of displacement as a is equal to v dv by ds it's another very important expression for uh, acceleration that may come in handy for competitive exam preparations so a is equal to v dv by ds is something we come to know now essentially i'll simply uh, cross multiply ds now you must remember that dv is the differential with respect to v so essentially if i send ds over there i can definitely integrate right hand side v dv can be integrated or in other words v can be integrated with respect to dv and on the left hand side i'll have a into ds now remember acceleration is a constant so if i put the integration sign over a ds only ds has to be integrated with respect to itself so carrying on with the same aspect i'll cross multiply and i'll integrate both sides look at the limits once again carefully the limits for ds is from 0 to s and the limits for dv is from u to v now why is that now essentially when i started my clock and i started to record the motion the object may have had some velocity which i'm referring to as u or initial velocity but from that very instant of time t equal to 0 i'm starting to measure my displacement also so my s is also equal to 0 but at that time velocity is not 0 but the velocity is equal to u or the initial velocity the time of snapshot when i started my clock the object did have some velocity which was equal to u and ultimately when i stopped my clock at t equal to t my displacement was s and the final velocity v was achieved i hope this is very very clear to you so once we have done that we'll simply integrate it both sides this will come out to be a into s this will come out to be v square by 2 but the limits are from u to v so it will be v square by 2 minus u square by 2 correct all the rules of integration must be clear to you if you have any doubts you can go back and watch the video on integral calculus so once we have done this we'll simply cross multiply 2 over there and we'll get v square is equal to u square plus 2as this is how we prove third equation of motion now let's try to prove the third equation of motion using graph so over here i have the same velocity time graph that i used to prove first and second equation of motion so here i have the velocity axis here the time axis and this is the same velocity time graph that i took now this blue line indicates it starts at u over here so when t is equal to 0 velocity was equal to u the initial velocity and when t is equal to t the velocity was equal to v now once again i have the presence of displacement in this case so i'll definitely think about the area under the curve because i know that area under the curve of velocity time graph gives me displacement now once i have done that the s can once again be written as area of rectangle plus area of triangle and s can again be written as ut plus half into v minus u by t how because area of this rectangle is simply length which is t into breadth which is u right from 0 to u the length is only u 
and area of triangle is half into base into altitude. So half multiplied by base is simply this length which is into t and altitude is simply this length as you can see which is v minus u. That's exactly what we have written there. Now once we have done that, I will substitute t is equal to v minus u by a from the first equation. Now why am I substituting this? Because in the third equation of motion, I have to eliminate time. So whatever factor of t I have in this equation of s u t, I have to remove the variable t. So I will be eliminating t by substituting v minus u by a from the first equation. So once I have done that, I will get this specific expression which upon so, uh, solving a bit more, I will get v square is equal to u square plus 2af. So the most important aspect in the graphical proof is that I have to eliminate t. I must remember it because the third equation of motion does not deal with time. It deals with initial velocity, final velocity, acceleration and displacement. I hope this is very, very clear to you. Thank you.